I'm excited. I really am. I love to preach the word. Um, I just praise God that he called me to be a pastor. Um, I want you to um, thank you guys for being here tonight, man. It's, it's always good to, to see you guys back on Sunday night. Um, I want to do some quick, I guess, go back and kind of rehash a little bit because I know we got some guests in the house tonight. Uh, but I want you to remember this morning as I spoke um, about the last giant. This is the, this is the last part of the series I'm going to be teaching on tonight uh, when it talks about the, I am the one. Y'all help me. This is the place. And now is the time. Um, I want you to remember that, okay, that you are the one. God is counting on you uh, to, to make a difference. God is counting on you uh, to, to preach his word, preach his name, and take his name to the highways and the byways, and to the hedges, compelling people to come to the gospel. Um, so I want, you, I want to remind you of that. But also, remember this morning when I told you guys that Israel had been in captivity. They had been in bondage for 40 years. Y'all remember me talking, telling you that? 40 years. I could not imagine. I'm 41 years of age. Could not imagine circling the same mountain for 40 years. It looks like they would have learned. But I really believe there's a lot of churches circling the same mountain. <laughs> been circling the same mountain for years after year after year after year. They know better. They know what they're doing is not working. But they refuse to change because of stinking tradition. And so tonight, I'm glad I'm at a house that I can be very open and honest. Uh, and you can take this word. But I want to go a little bit deeper tonight with you um, about the last giant. Remember, they come out of the wilderness... Israel did. Forty years, God supplied their needs, their clothes, their food, their shoes never wore out. Uh, it was manna every day. It was, a, it was a fire by night and a cloud, uh, cloud by day. God supplied every one of their needs. And here they are. They just got out of the wilderness, got out of their bondage. And now they're stuck between the wilderness and their promise. And y'all remember what I told you. There was a man named, named Og. Og. And this man named Og had a big bed, a <laughs> big bed. The bed was 14 foot long and 7 foot wide. There, it was 7 foot wide. And so many people are allowing 7 feet to rob them of their promises of God. So I want to dig a little bit deeper tonight, but I want to give you, I want to rehash on that just a little bit. Um, about the giant, his name was Og. He was a king uh, of the tribe of Anak. And that was exactly the same tribe that Goliath was from, okay? And so they were seven feet away from their promise, all right? Um, so I want to read some scripture to you here in just a moment. But before I do that, according to the scripture and according to Hebrew, and you've got to go back to the original language to find out exactly what the word's talking about. How many people do you know probably just reads the Bible and they'll see that there was a man named Og, he was from the tribe of Anak. He had a bed. It was approximately 14 foot long, 7 foot wide. And they'll just read that and skip over and miss the whole meaning what God is wanting to give the church. How many of y'all received something this morning? You received a, a word, a now word that God says, you know what? I'm not going to let anything stand between me and my promise. I'm not going to let anything stand between me and my promise. And Elkhorn, if you're, or if you're a guest under my teaching tonight, you will become a dangerous Christian when you start doing that. That I made my mind up, I'm not going to sit still. The spirit of this word bed, according to the Hebrew, meant this. It was a spirit called, take it easy. Take it easy. Just get comfortable. <laughs> Lay back and you don't have to be intense. You don't have to be on fire. You don't have to be passionate about God. Uh, you've done enough. And how many people today in churches and even in, in marriages, they're just getting by because they're, they've done enough. They, they're just getting by because they've done enough. And I told you this morning, Elkhorn, above all churches, you could have this mentality. We've seen 500 salvations. We're getting ready to baptize again next month. I hope we have about 10 to 15 people working on that right now, meeting with them. Uh, we're almost out of debt. We're $68,000 being out of debt. Isn't that awesome? And... Uh, we're, we're, we're growing by leaps and bounds, and uh, it's just amazing. So Elkhorn, above all churches, you can sit there and go, well, Brian, aren't you satisfied, and aren't we, haven't we done enough? No. There's more to do. 
more, more, more. There's more to do. And so when you look at this bed up here tonight, I don't want you to look at it saying, well, phew, I can't wait to get there about 930. I don't want you to look at this bed tonight and sit and go, boy, that looks awful comfortable. It is. Why do you think they call it a bed? But so many churches today and so many Christians today are right smack dab in the middle of a king-size bed. King-size bed. Remember, this spirit will tell you that you, you don't, don't desire nothing else. You've got enough. Don't, don't desire to, know, to be hungry for the Lord. Don't desire to have a deeper prayer life. Don't desire to go forward. Don't desire to, to be enriched by the Spirit. Don't desire these things. Don't, don't dream no more. Don't, in your marriage, don't, don't dream no more. Just be satisfied with what God's given you. I've heard that lie all my life. Aren't you just happy with what God's given you? Lord, if we read the Bible, God's got a whole lot more to give us. So why in the world would I be satisfied with 500 people when Camelsville's got 30-some thousand? Why in the world would I be satisfied with 500 on Sunday morning and out of the 10 houses that you pass coming to church, eight of them don't go to church nowhere? Why in the world would I be satisfied with that mentality? Maybe that's why churches are dying. They're just satisfied. We've got enough. Lord, if we keep building, we'll just have a debt. No, you won't. If you're tithe, you won't have a debt. I'm being honest with you. If we'll just tithe and give to the Lord, we won't have to go in debt. And that's my prayer, man. I pray that, man, when it comes building time, that, man, we got money in the bank. Yeah, I mean, y'all receive that tonight. Man, we're just going to have the money. We ain't going to have to go to the bank. He owns it anyway. Amen. So praise the Lord. So this spirit says, man, take it easy. Get comfortable, Jeremy. You've done enough. Just keep putting Pepsis and Dyke Mountain Dews. On the, on the shelves and just do it. Be a good Christian young man and go to church on Sunday and Sunday night and don't forget your tithe of glory. Hallelujah. And if you're really on fire for God, wear a suit. And if you're really on fire with God, teach a Sunday school class. Oh, and how many of y'all have heard this? I've heard this all my life. The real true Christians come to church on Wednesday. Huh? Y'all have, that's why y'all laughing. You, 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 I've heard that before. But let me show you something. If you are born again and you've got the Spirit of God in you, you will want to serve Him. Let this get in your spirit tonight. The reason why people are not serving, I'm just going to be honest with you, I'm so tired of the fluff gospel. Because, man, they need to be touched by the Holy Spirit. They need, they need to get on fire with the Lord. Now, I know you say, well, Brian, I, I'm not loud and I'm not rambunctious and I don't like running the aisles and this, that, and the other. I've never read that in the Bible. Well, here's the thing. You don't have to be me and I don't have to be you. You just be who God created you to be. Everybody worships differently. And that's what makes the church beautiful. Miss Alton, have you ever seen Miss Alton on the front row? She don't stand, man. She's 97 years old. She deserves to sit down. Hallelujah. She gets up and gets that little hand, and boy, she'll pat. She's like me because I'm off rhythm, and if she's listening to me, we're really off rhythm. <laughs> but, man, she just loves it. Man, we just need to fall back in love with the Lord. Remember me telling you this morning that most people are satisfied sitting on the outskirts of the wilderness and just looking at their promises? Y'all remember me saying, most people, Richie, are just, just satisfied just sitting on the outskirts of, of, of the premises of the promises, and they're just sitting there looking at what all God could give them. And the reason why they don't move forward is because they know it's going to take more commitment on their part. It's going to take more commitment. Watch this. If we're going to grow, like I know we are, we're going to keep growing and growing and growing and growing and growing. You say, Brian, what's, what's going to happen? We're, going, we're not going to get the fellowship. Yes, you will. That's why we have a meet and greet. That's why we have things like that. We're going, we're going to grow. But I'm going to show you, most people are satisfied sitting on the outside of the premises, looking at their promises, and sitting there going, man, I'm okay. I'm okay. I, I'm all right. I've got enough. My kids are healthy. I'm, I'm healthy. Uh, no doctor bills this month. Praise be unto God. And everybody's good in my house. And no, no big problems right now. Isn't it amazing? We, we say we don't have problems based upon the worldly standards. I'm worried about your spirit. 
Because everybody in here tonight is rich in Jesus if you're born again. Amen. It's not about you having money in your pocket. It's about what you've got in your heart. And you take a church that's on fire with God and got a deep well in their heart, they'll make some eternal differences in this world. So tonight, if you have your Bibles, that's a, um, I want you to turn to Judges chapter 16. Talking about the last giant. This bed represents take it easy. Just sit back, get comfortable. We don't have to grow no more. I'm satisfied with 500. How about you? I'm satisfied with the $7,500 offering every week. I'm satisfied. I'm satisfied. My kids are here with me and praise be unto God. I'm satisfied. That is nowhere to be found in this Bible. This bed represents take it easy. Relax. Get comfortable, Bobby. Don't go to the jail ministry. My goodness. You're in your 70s, man. You should be slowing down now. <laughs> to what people would tell you. But it's not no truth to that. It's not no truth to that. Watch this. If I ever had a beckoning word in my spirit, I believe now's the time. If you're ever going to serve the Lord, if we're ever going to worship God, now's the time. Now's the time. Now's the time. You say, well, Brian, I, I'm waiting until I, I get some money in the bank. How's that working out for you? Well, Brian, I'm just waiting for my children to come back home. How's that working out for you? You, you can't base how you're going to serve based upon a circumstance. I'm going to serve him with my wife, without my wife, with you, or without you. I've made my mind up. I'm going to praise his name. And that's where you got to get and you won't. And when you get like that, you, you get dangerous. Because then it don't matter what people think about you. Then it don't matter if, you, if you're too loud or you're too soft. It don't, it don't matter. If you went too long, it don't matter. I'm not, you're not playing for us anyway. You're playing for him. And so when y'all get that attitude, I'm not playing for them. I come to church to worship him, and it's not about a guitar or a piano or nothing. I, you worship him because he's God. That's it. Hallelujah. Yeah, God likes it loud. He does like it loud. Hallelujah. But watch this. Judges chapter 16, for there, say amen. Let me read this real quick. All right, y'all ready? Verse 15 through 22 is where we're going. Judges 16, verse 15, if I can find it. Then she said to him, talking about Samson here, okay? How can you say, I love you, when you won't confide in me? How many of y'all ever had that lie on you before? Lord, if you love me, you'll do this. And if you love me, you'll do that. Oh, my, my. This is the third time you have made a fool of me and haven't told me the secret of your strength. With such nagging, <laughs> I love that word, she prodded to him day after day until he was what? Listen to me. I'm going to give you all a good word tonight. I want you, it's going to be probably more of a teaching than it is a preaching, but we may preach a little bit. But here's the thing. Listen to me. Satan will nag you to death. He'll nod you till you become tired. He'll say, you've done enough. Back off. Don't you faithful enough? You went to church on Sunday. You put your tithe in. Why in the world would you want to come to church on Sunday night? He'll nod you to death. He'll prod you. He'll lie to you. Watch this. Verse 17. So he told her everything. Listen to me. And that's exactly what the church, that's exactly what Satan's been doing to the churches for way too long. He's been nodding her. He's been lying to her. And the church has now fell into the deception of the enemy. And now they're doing exactly what the enemy wants to hurt him to do. He, he's lied to us. How many of y'all believe this word tonight? How many of you from Genesis to Revelation and everything in between, you believe everything this Bible says? Well, guys, let's live it. Let's just live it. You say, Brian, I can't. Yes, you can. Yes, you can live it. See, the devil's lying to some of you right now. And here's what he's saying. I feel this in my spirit, and I'm going to preach it. That, that you're not good enough to be in ministry. That you're not good enough to, to do anything for the Lord because of your past. You can't go forward because of what Satan has done to you in the past. I'm here to declare to you tonight, under the unction of God, that if you're forgiven, stand up and act like it. Hallelujah. If you're forgiven, you can go forward with Jesus Christ. The problem is this. 
You've been in the wilderness for way too long. And now you've come out from the wilderness. You can see your promise. You know you've got a calling. You know what God's called you to do. Help me preach. And you're scared to go forward because of a, a, a king-sized bed. A king-sized bed. I never thought I'd be a pastor of 500 people. I, I never thought this. I never thought I'd get my doctorate degree. Jesus. I never thought you're looking at a young man who used to pass out giving book reports. I never thought that I would be your pastor. But, man, I love you guys. And I want you to know, man, that we're going to make it in this, in this life together. This is a journey, and we get to live this dream together. Why in the world would we back off and say, well, I remember 1995. That's old. I told Steve Ayers, and I love him. He's hard head. I said, Steve, I love you, but this is 2013. That word that worked back in 1995 is not going to work right now. We're going forward. So what I'm trying to tell you is so many people, the devil has been nagging you and nagging you and prodding you and prodding you until you have told him everything. You've told him every little secret of your life where you're weak and where you can't stand up. And I declare tonight, rise up, man and woman of God. Rise up. He's a nothing but a, the old devil's a liar. Old devil's a liar. So he told her everything. He said, no razor has ever You've been used on my head. He said, because, listen to this, I have been a, a Nazarite set apart to God. Whew. Since birth. His mama dedicated him over to God at birth. Man. Listen, he says, if my head were, were shaved, my strength, my power would leave me. And I would become as weak as any other man. Verse 18, when Delilah saw that he had told her everything, she sent word to the rulers of the Philistines, come back once more. Give me one more shot. The old devil's like that too. I got them now. I got them now. They're weak now. They've told me everything, and they're believing the lies I've been telling them for so long. I've got them now. Watch what he says here. He's told me everything. The rulers of the Philistines returned with the silver in their hands. Having put, watch this, having put him to sleep on her lap. Went back to the bed. <laughs> Went back to the bed. He called the man to shave off the seven braids of his hair. So, and so he began to subdue him. And his strength, what? Left him. Verse 20. Then she called Samson. The Philistines are upon you. This is a sad verse, one of the saddest verses in the Bible, but I really believe this is where a lot of churches are at today. Y'all listen to me. He woke from his sleep and thought, I'll go out before and shake myself free, just like I have so many times. But he did not know that the Lord had left him. He did not know that the Lord had left him. I'm going to tell you something tonight under the unction of God. There's a lot of things I don't know in this Bible, but one thing I do know is when God's in this house. There's something that's not for sale in this house. Drugs can't get you high enough. Alcohol can't get you drunk enough. But when you've got God in the house and the church of God, I'm telling you great things will happen because God's in the house. I wouldn't take nothing for the anointing of God. I wouldn't take nothing for the Spirit of God. I wouldn't take nothing for Greg, you playing that old guitar and making them old strings jump off the guitar. Don't stop. Hallelujah. I wouldn't take nothing, Sarah, for what we got in this church right now. You can have all the money you want to. If this building was stacked up from the floor all the way to the roof with $100 bills, you can have it. Just give me the Lord. Just give me Jesus. Give me what we got in this church. Because I'm telling you, I'm the richest man alive. Because my, my treasure's not laid up in money or in a house. Or anything, my treasure's laid up in heaven. Give me Jesus. That's all I want. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. He said he didn't know that the Lord had left him. Then the Philistines, they, 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 they seized him. They gouged out his eyes. Notice the first thing. Man, this is so good. 
Notice the first thing they did, Beth. Y'all remember the children of Israel? They got out of the wilderness. They were standing and they were what? They were looking at the promised land. The first thing the enemy will rob from me and you tonight is our vision. A church without a vision will perish. The first thing the enemy will do for as a man in the house of God, he will rob you of your vision. You'll come complacent. You'll become lazy. You'll lay in a bed. You won't have the fire you once had. You won't have the zeal you once had. People ask me all the time, say, Brian, you get tired? I'm telling you, when the anointing of God shows up, it's, it's like the Energizer Bunny. You keep going and going and going. He'll give you strength when you're weak, hallelujah. Hey, people say, how in the world y'all get through 13 nights continuously of praising the Lord? I felt better after 13 than I did at one. It's because when you give God what he, what he deserves, but the first thing the enemy would do, Dixie, when you get just a little breakthrough, and man, you step up there and you say, Woo! I'm not in bondage no more. I don't drink no more. I don't smoke, chew, or do anymore. And you're sitting there, and the first thing the enemy does, he'll gouge your eyes. He'll rob you of your vision. He'll try to derail you, get you off course. And so many churches today are like the children of Israel. They've been around the same mountain for 40 years, and they, I call it an insane church. You go around the same mountain for 40 years expecting a different outcome. That's called insanity. If you want something you've never had, you've got to do something you've never done. If you want to remain how you are, Stay like you are. But if you want to change from the Lord, you've got to obey the Lord. Look at this. I, told, I wrote this down. As mighty as Samson was, the enemy knew the only way he could defeat him. Listen to me. The enemy knew the only way he could defeat Satan is if he put him to sleep. I like this word. Same way with the church. The only way Satan can defeat the church is if the church goes asleep. Here we go. I've been working too long. I'm so tired tonight. Shoo. I mean, I like the remote control Christians too, don't you? And I like, those, I like those kind of Christians that will sit there. And, and I noticed this from my son. He's not here tonight. So since he's not here, I can talk about him. Blake was upstairs, and he, he done this, Bobby. He really messed me up. Mama! He was upstairs. Blake's 21, can jump over a fence. And I'm not going to tell you how old Dane is because I want to stay married. He said, Mama, will you fix me something to eat? And man, that burnt me up. I went to that door, and I said, I opened the door. I said, Blake, how old are you? 21. I said, get down here and fix your grilled cheese. <laughs> man, that just messed me up. If you're not careful, you'll become so lazy, you'll try to start giving God orders when God done gave you the order. Right. You'll start saying you think you're at McDonald's or something. Um... Big Mac full of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> you kill you, supersize that Holy Ghost. You start giving God orders after you know what God is. Listen to me. Listen to me. I want y'all, I'm gonna, I'm gonna test y'all tonight. How many of you know that you at least have you you've at least got one gift in your life? That means yes. That means I don't know. The Bible says that everybody has at least got one gift. So I'm going to ask you something. Are you using your gift? Are you using your gift? You say, Brian, I'm 74. I told you to tell Miss Lure that. You're 74, right? She said, yeah. But listen, listen to this. I truly believe Satan is saying the same thing today. Listen to this. If he can get Elkhorn to go to sleep, I'll defeat them. If I can get Elkhorn just to back off just a little bit, quit putting so much pressure on your people, Brian. 
I'll never put any more pressure on you than what God puts on me. I'll never ask you to do something that God would not allow me to do myself. Hallelujah. I can just <laughs> get the Christians in the church. I can hear Satan now to lose their spiritual fire and to become comfortable and lazy and lackadaisical and all these other big words. If they fall asleep, I'll win. I'll win. I don't know about you, but I've come way too far to crawl up in that bed and to fall asleep. I've come way too far. I've done seen too many things, Bobby, in my life. I don't understand them, but I'm not going to go up there and sleep with the enemy. I believe so many Christians are sleeping with the enemy and they don't even realize it. Hallelujah. I just wonder how many, how many people are spiritually asleep and the enemy is cutting off their strength, their power, because they're asleep. Turn to Matthew chapter 13 real quick. Matthew chapter 13. Y'all okay? Say amen. All right. I'm going to show you something. Verse 24 and 25. Matthew chapter 13, verse 24 and 25. Notice this. Notice this. The bed means just you, just you have enough. You don't have to do anything. You just get lazy. Get comfortable. All of a sudden, Samson, one of the strongest men in the world, Samson tied a thousand foxes' tails together. I don't understand this. And he also got up there, and all of a sudden he went, boo! And the thousand foxes started scattering. There's a word in that. They started going northeast, south, and west. Samson also took the jawbones of a donkey and killed a man. Yeah, he, and he was, he, Samson said three things. I, I can't drink alcohol, you can't cut my hair, and I can't eat meat. And Samson, watch this. By the time he was 20, he done broke every one of them. He knew the law. He knew what God told him to do. So the first thing the enemy done when Samson was when he disobeyed and told the enemy everything because he was sleeping, got lazy and fell asleep, God, the, the Satan gouged his eyes out. Look here in verse 24 and 25. Matthew 13. Y'all there, amen? All right, good deal. Jesus told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven, listen to me, the kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. Listen to this. But while everyone was what? Sleeping. While everyone was sleeping, look what happened. The enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat. While the church was sleeping... Like the kingdom of heaven. This is like a, a parable, like a kingdom of heaven. While the church fell asleep, Satan stole the seed. Wow. I just wonder how many people are dying and going to hell because the church is asleep. See, I think Satan loves souls more than the church does a lot of times. I think a lot of times Satan says, I believe in hell because I, I own hell. And I don't care about how big the church is. I don't care what's going on in the church. But he says, watch, while the church is lazy, while the church is comfortable, while the church is laying still, Satan is doing the work. He's still in the seed. He's telling lies. Boy, that's a powerful word. That is so powerful tonight. I just wonder how many seeds, how many souls have passed by you and because you were spiritually asleep, tonight they're going to hell. Whoa, that's a tough word, but it's the right word. When it's right, it's tight. Well, I just don't think I can talk to them about Jesus. Are you saved? It's the Holy Spirit working through you. It ain't you anyway. The Bible says in Jeremiah chapter 1, Jeremiah said, Lord, I can't do it. He said, while I formed you in your mother's womb, I created you to preach to all the nations. He said, I put a word in your belly. All you got to do in verse 10 is open your mouth and God will preach the word. Hallelujah. I'm proof of that tonight. All you got to do is stand up with the boldness in your life and sit and say, man, God loves you. And God said, I'll put the words deep down in your spirit. Hallelujah. 
While the church is sleeping, Satan is busy. Watch this. Satan does not take a nap. Y'all got this word? Satan does not take a nap. And the church has lost its zeal. I'm going to be honest with you. I deal with it all the time. I go to conferences, preaching events, and they'll ask this question, what are y'all doing? Why, why are souls being saved? It's a simple answer. Just preach Jesus. Just preach the Bible. Worship the Lord with all you got while you can, have, can worship the Lord. And I promise you, God loves people so much, he don't want nobody to die and go to hell. The reason why, listen to me, this is tough. The reason why people are dying and going to hell is because the church is asleep. You let every one of us in here get on fire for a soul. You let everybody in this church right now sit and say, you know what, I don't know how to do a lot of things, but you know what, I, I'm going to lead somebody to Jesus. You let every one of us get spirit-filled in this house tonight, and I promise you, you'll have a zeal more than you will for work. Putting 60 or 70 hours in at work and only reading your Bible five minutes a week. Pastors. Same thing. Keith, that's what they say about us. We pray 15 to 20 hours, I mean 15 to 20 minutes a day, and that's all we pray. That's what statistics say. Well, I think we need to change that stuff. Let's get on fire, church. Is that, is that let me ask you something. Is that do anything to y'all when I sit there and tell you that while the church is sleeping, the enemy's still in seed. Does that bother y'all? Be honest with me. Does that bother you tonight? That while the church is sleeping and getting comfortable and resting, relaxing, got a remote control Christian. Hey, Jesus, send one to me and I may lead them to you. The church is sleeping. They're asleep. And I hope it bothers you so much. Y'all, y'all either you get mad at me and do something. Hallelujah. Do something. We got men of God in ordained positions, not never led anybody to Jesus Christ. We got pastors. I talk to them all the time. That's never led a soul. To Jesus Christ. So sad. But we're the church. Upon this rock. Matthew chapter 16 verse 18. I'll build my church. And not even the gates of hell. Should prevail against it. Greater is he that is in you. Than he is in the world. If God be for you. Who can be against you. Hallelujah. 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 And nothing changes in your life. It's like a pepper rally. <laughs> it's, it's just like an emotional roller coaster anymore. And I'm sitting and telling you, declaring today, I really believe if I had a word that ever fit Elkhorn Baptist Church, that I hope it gets under your saddle, a burr under your saddle tonight, that, man, you want to go soul winning. Soul winning. How many of y'all got lost people in your family? Watch this. Isn't this, isn't this something? Now watch this. Be honest. Be honest. How many of you have ever witnessed to him? Not even half. That's what I'm talking about. You say, Brian, what if I offend them? Offend them and take them to heaven. Quit trying to be politically correct. And I'm telling you, this is the truth. This is a good word. Maybe it's just for me. But I'll take it. I'll receive it. He said these words. How many of y'all, how many of y'all know this? That an alarm clock, every, usually most alarm clocks have a snooze button. I thought about this when I was preparing this, this message. Has a snooze button. Not my favorite button on the alarm clock. <laughs> huh? Y'all, yeah, y'all too, huh? It's got a snooze button. Here it is, man. I know i got to get up early. I know i got to do certain things. And all of a sudden, y'all love what they You know why they made it? Ank, 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 ank. It's annoying. I hate this sound. Why couldn't it wake you up and say, this is the day. This is or something. Not me saying it, but somebody else saying it. <laughs> why couldn't it be nice music or something? Or get some, uh, 
I don't know, some Fantasia. Or I don't know. It's somebody, I don't know if she even talks or even sings Christian music. She does tonight. But, man, I'm just saying, you know, here it is, y'all. Y'all know I'm telling you the truth. Five o'clock, my case seven. And, 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 and you're like, what is going on? And you know you got to get up, but what do you do? And you know you only get ten more minutes. You say, how do you know? Because I hit the floor. I love it. <laughs> ten more minutes. And, boy, that ten minutes is like your best sleep. It is, then, don't y'all lie. It's your best sleep ever. I mean, man, it's just like when your alarm clock's going off, you're just then now falling asleep. You're like, man, I only got like five minutes. And then you'll sit there and plead with God, God, please. How many of you have ever done this? Lord, please. God, somehow, in the name of Jesus, make time just dissipate. Make time just disappear. Ank. <laughs> that ugly, demonic sound comes back and what do you do i'm so crazy if i got to get up at seven i'll set it for like 6 15 to know i can hit it three times y'all do too don't you it's just what we do but y'all think about this how many of y'all ever done this i thought about this when i was i was breaking i was like man god is just so cool i said man I've been sitting there, I hit it like three times, and then I start justifying. I sit there and go, well, I, ain't, I don't have to shave today. <laughs> I don't have to shave today. And I feel sorry for you women. Them legs, you know what I'm saying? I'll be good. But well, we got a little section here, y'all got the long the legs, you know what I'm saying? And then you start justifying more. Well, I, I, I ironed my stuff last week hopefully it won't have wrinkles and man you'll sit there and even justify again you hit the alarm clock one more time and ink 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 and you're sitting there going well if i don't go through mcdonald's that'll save 10 minutes on my coffee <laughs> <Was it? laughs> and i started thinking i really believe that man the alarm is sounding I really do, guys. I'm not just saying this to men to say, guys, we need to really think about this and have a business meeting. The alarm is sounding. It has been going off for a long time. In some of your lives, you've done hit the snooze button. A lot. A lot. And God is sitting here tonight and standing here tonight, and some of you are still in the king-size bed. You know what God's called you to do. You know, people say, Brian, how do you know what God's called you to do? The Bible says God will give you the desires of your heart. Listen to me. I'm going to teach you just for a moment. I'm done. Praise team, y'all come. Because if they don't come, y'all will be another 30 minutes. I remember when I was, gosh, I guess 12 or 13 years of age. My mom, and she can still testify to this. Every time I'd get in the shower, we had 1970 wallpaper up. And y'all had like flowers all over it and stuff. The carpet was green or orange. You know, now it's coming back in style. That's what's scary. And I remember getting in that shower, and I remember preaching like a madman. I remember getting in that shower, and Mama said, Brian, who are you talking to? I said, Mom, I'm going to lead all the flowers to God tonight. I just loved it. Loved it. I remember at the age of 14, I, I preached my first sermon. And um, scared to death. I still remember the title. I talked about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I said, watch him go. <laughs> Five minutes. Don't y'all start. <laughs> but I've always, inside of me, I just, I wasn't, I wasn't the best teenager. I had my problems, man. I'd done things I shouldn't have done. As I got older, man, I'd done things I shouldn't have done. I looked at things I shouldn't have looked at. Been places I shouldn't have been. But I'm not lying to you, man. I couldn't sin good. You know what I'm talking I just couldn't sin good. I tried, but I couldn't sin good. Bye, baby. 
But I remember my conviction was so close to, to my heart. And I didn't want to hurt my father who art in heaven. And you know, I'm 41. And I'm still just as crazy, manly, deeply in love with God. Like I was when I gave him my heart to him at the age of seven. I didn't know what I was doing. But man, God's working. I'm living a dream. I'm going to be honest with you guys. This Elkhorn's a dream to me. Y'all are a dream to me. But I really feel and I really hear the urgency of God tell me to speak. Maybe it is just for me. But I hear an alarm going off. <laughs> Quit hitting the snooze. It's time to do something. It's time to do something. It is time I come by tonight to give you a wake-up call. <laughs> I come by tonight just to swing by to tell you guys that I really believe, and I'm not just telling you this for a hand clap or to say amen preacher, but I really believe the Elkhorn Baptist Church's best days are yet to come. I really believe that God is mighty in this house. I know His anointing is thicker than it's ever been in this house. And I believe it's time that the church wakes up, stands up, prays up, and shouts up because we're going up. Hey, I wish I had some witnesses in the house tonight that today is the day of salvation. The alarm is sounding. Quit hitting the snooze. That's right. Quit hitting the snooze. You may not have 10 more minutes. Donnie Bird, you can testify to that. Did you plan on dying that day? He died nine minutes on a table. I want to live to be an old man. I, I, I want to live to be an old man. I want to grow old with my wife. I want to hold her hand. But I'm not promised tonight. I feel the Lord. I'm not promised another second. Brian, why are you so loud? And why are you so rambunctious? And why are you so on fire? And why are you so intense? Because this is all I know that I've got right now. Don, this is all I know i got right now. And I'll be daggone if the old devil gouges my eyes out. I'll be daggone if he nags me and prods That's me. Right. I'm on, I, don't, I may be over there, but I'm going to my promise. That's right. That's right. Amen. I talk, uh. Thank you. Sunday night, welcome to church. I can see this. I can see on a Sunday night this building full. Hallelujah. You say, Brian, here's what the negative people do. Well, you still like about 300. In the name of Jesus, I received 300 tonight. Attitude's everything. It's how you're going to get there, church. My God, I feel the Lord. I, I feel the Lord. Some of you have lost your vision. Some of you have been laying in your comforter and you're comfortable in your line, dormant. And here you are tonight. There's the same king-size bed. Just do enough and survive and come to church. And God bless you. I'll see you next week. That's not what God wants from you. Hallelujah. God, I've delivered the mail. Romans chapter 13 verse 11 says this. Wake up from your sleep. We've been talking about sleeping, laying down. Wake up from your sleep. Listen to me. Because your salvation is nearer now than when you first believed. That's right. Sarah, think about this. You are closer to heaven now than ever before. I am closer to heaven tonight than ever before. Dave Newton, you are closer to God and to heaven tonight than you ever was before. 
I love y'all. I'm going to open this altar. You see, Brian, you already gave an altar call this morning. Evidently, it wasn't good enough. God wants another one. That's right. I don't know about you, but I need to be altered all the time. <laughs> I am a full-time job. <laughs> I'm telling you. I am a full-time job. So, Elkhorn, I commission you tonight. Wake up. Eh, eh, eh. Don't you hit the snooze. Eh. Eh, don't you reach over there. Eh, you say, Brian, you're annoying. Eh, eh, eh. Thank God they don't have a crying baby alarm clock. Some of you do, right? I love you. I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. I love you. But Elkhorn, if we're going to go, we got to keep rolling. That's right. Got to keep rolling. That's right. I, I don't like it. I don't either a lot of times, to be honest with you. I will be honest with you. I don't either. But I know what God's called me to do. My wife don't like me a lot, a lot of times either. But she ain't got no choice. She said, I do. So guess what? We're going to keep rolling. We're going to keep rolling. Dino can't, she can't outrun me. She can't outrun me. I got the girl. I got her. I already told you, if she tries to leave, I already got a bag packed. She can't outrun me. I'm telling you, you need to make your mind up tonight. This is your church. Watch me. This is your church. God's got you here. And while you're alive, you're going to do something with what God's given you. Amen? Come on, Elkhorn. Amen? Come on, man of God. Amen? I am the one. This is the place. And now is the time.